Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Austin CAD user group meeting for September 2023. This month, we have uh, Ramesh from Autodesk. He's a senior product manager for some of their uh, infrastructure work around InfraWorks and Reality Capture. And he is here to talk to us a little bit about what they're doing with Reality Capture. Um, welcome, Ramesh. Uh, if you'd like to take it over and tell us about the Reality Capture. Absolutely. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, everyone. Uh, like Adam said, I'm Ramesh uh, Sridharan. I'm from Autodesk. I'm one of the product manager uh, on the AEC side of the Autodesk. Um, so I, I I wear a couple of hats, uh, but for this meeting, I think my main thing is I'm the product manager for reality solutions, the point clouds, the, all those stuff come into picture. So we've been working on point clouds for quite some time, but last six months to a year, we've been working on some what we think as a cool technology. Uh, we thought we'll share it with you guys and uh, maybe get some feedback and things like that. So I, I post this one um, as a, a safe harbor part. Most of the items I will be talking today are actually part of the product, but sometimes I'm very passionate about this topic. I might end up saying something what we're working on or what might be coming. Uh, so just don't make any purchase decision on, based on this, uh, but most of them should be good. All right. Um, I, I'm not sure. Maybe I can pause quick one second. Um, maybe a, a hand raise. How many of you guys know about recap or reality capture? Dealt with it or messed with it or know about it? Any hand raise? Okay. So it's kind of a mixed group. Okay, cool. So then I prepared it. Good. So the, the re reality capture is just point clouds data different ways you can get it. Uh, nowadays, there are mixed ways of getting it. Uh, it could be, uh, you can put it in your backpack and walk or put it in the back of your truck and drive and drones and uh, static and uh, anything. And that you name, there's a way to collect the point cloud data. Um, so reality captures basically, as the name says, capturing the reality as a 3D entities, 3D data, and use that in your design and modeling environment. It's been in the industry for literally last 23, 24 years. But now with the technology, it's getting more high resolution and all those things. Uh, the product in Autodesk site is called Recap Pro. Uh, this is the product where it can uh, uh, digest a lot of point cloud data, different file formats, and it does have multiple things. I'll show you a few of those, but not. I'm not going to go. This is not a product introduction so a presentation, but I'll go some of the main things. Um, but it does the registration. It does the photo processing. But most importantly, it lets, lets you bring your point cloud data together, visualize it, share it, and efficiently use it for your design and modeling. And this doesn't have to be the ones you collect. If you are in the audience and you're saying, well, we don't collect any data, so this is not interesting for me, there are point clouds available, um, either as a um, um, in, in your county or your state or different ways. There are a lot of point clouds available you can still leverage those things in your workflow with as easy as possible. Some of the tools we are adding will actually help you on that. And here, the, this video shows you the, some of the different ways of getting the point cloud, how Recap can help you um, create uh, the point cloud data, basically. And we, like I, I, I kind of mentioned, you can actually do multiple stuff with the product, right? Um, but one of the key objective or a philosophy we are uh, we are kind of holding in Autodesk, especially when it comes to reality capture is we want to create the tools to let users like you leverage the point cloud data to reality information from the reality capture data and take it in your workflow. Uh, visualization is great. I, every, everything I showed you in the previous video is awesome, nice to show you, but at the end of the day, when it comes to your workflow, you're going to ask me, how can I use it in my design? How can I use it in my modeling? That's what's going to make my project move forward. Those are the tools we're actually adding um, recently and we we'll continue to add. That's what I'm going to talk about it um, today. So before I jump into since there are a little bit of a mixed uh, customer. I just want to very simply put some because sometimes one time I gave a presentation, people don't even know the product name. I kind of so enthusiastic, just jumped into the product and started talking about the features. I just want to give you a quick overview these are all the different ways you can collect the point cloud data. These are the sensors. I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with one or two or maybe all of them. Everything comes into, in Autodesk, everything comes into a product called Recap Pro. That's the main product. 
and that has almost all the capabilities uh, we are showing today and recap fo photo is kind of a part of the recap pro where you can actually mess with the 3d meshes and it, it also has a photo processing to um, <clears throat> to create point clouds from your drone drone uh, uh, pictures or even your cell phone pictures for example you can actually collect go ahead and collect the images around the object the recap photo has a capability to create 3d point cloud data we also have a SDK and a food service. It's more on the development plugin side. Um, I'm not going to be covering most of those uh, those things to today's presentation. But uh, if you guys are interested, let me know. We can catch up offline on that. And Recap is one of the product is there in all the Autodesk collections. Uh, I'm assuming most of the folks in today um, know about AEC collection at least, or maybe other collections. And if you have it collections already, you actually have the product already uh, it's just a matter of installing it or just double click and start using it and if you ask me the question what am i going to do after double clicking that's what we're going to cover right today um, this is important because i keep talking about the product but how what exactly it does let's get into the little bit more detail this is what recap pro does you can bring in your raw data like a points or images or both we have several tools to create the data when i say create i mean like images for example you bring it in it creates point cloud uh, if you bring another point cloud you can register so it create a gathered registered point cloud data and we also have a, a service to create a mesh uh, either from point cloud or photo automatically creates a 3d mesh as well at the end of the day it gives you a mesh in some format and the point clouds in some format which you can take it into uh, acc or autodesk construction cloud um, uh, or any desktop products like a Revit or a Civil 3D or whatnot. And this workflow is kind of like a recap, it's kind of like an entry point for the point clouds um, in, in Autodesk where you can do all the prep stuff. Then your downstream users, your civil engineers, your architects can take it and use it directly. Which is the workflow by itself is pretty good. Uh, but the one we catch is when it comes to desktop product, users end up having lots and lots of data. If, if you guys are new to point cloud data, and if somebody is saying it's a point cloud is big, they're talking gigabytes, sometimes they're talking terabytes actually. So it's a lot of data and that adds most of the time uh, in importing and exporting and all those things. And on top of it, once you get into the desktop product, what are you gonna do with it? The point cloud and extract the information is a big challenge. Big challenge, not just for Autodesk, it's actually a big challenge in industry and especially in last five years, six years, I would say, uh, now people collect more and more point cloud data, more high resolution. This is getting more and more pronounced. Uh, many products makes you make multiple copies of the point cloud, cut into smaller pieces and stuff. It actually getting bigger and bigger. That's what um, um, I'm hearing from the customers as well. If you if you guys hear something different, uh, let me know. So this is a workflow we've been doing it in the past. So since last year, we are trying to change this little bit so that, again, we will go back to the philosophy, what I talked about, how to help users leverage the information content. So we are moving something towards this, where Recap Pro still can do its job, create the point cloud or a mesh, but instead of as a user messing with it, with the large data, sending hard drives to others to even just visualize it, and sometimes you just have to look and search through and find where it is, you can publish into ACC or BIM 360. From there, you can visualize it. Now in the browser, I can actually visualize the point cloud data and you can use a model coordination, which is a fancy way of saying, I can overlap a mesh from point cloud with a Revit model, with the civil 3D drawing, everything in one and uh, easily check it out before, you know, as an engineer before digging too much. And also we then we start, you are visualizing it why not extract some information content so we are we added some tools called stand to design we're extracting design elements geometries from point cloud data through just directly from the browser you don't have to download a single point and we are trying to do the same thing for stand to beam also moving forward but the key here is your most of your pain points on handling point cloud data tiling and all those things are eliminated it's all in the cloud from your design point of view, your desktop products can take the key information you're looking for as a civil engineer or an architect and continue with your work so that it's kind of best of both worlds. I, as an engineer or architect, I get what I want, but I don't have to deal with uh, 
large data problems. So we are trying to find uh, this ideal solution and actually kind of some of the solution we added is kind of close to that. You'll actually see um, uh, in a few minutes. Um, so I, I was thinking about it um, to how to make it very simple uh, for the customer. So I came up with the concept of civil design in literally three steps. If you have a point cloud data, follow these three steps. You can actually have your feature extracted features like a geometry or something in your civil civil design. I'm kind of focusing on the civil design, not on the architect side. Uh, the BIM is a separate aspect, but we can have a separate session on that later. So step number one import scans to recap so if you if you're new to the recap world or the point cloud world you will if you ask for somebody for a point cloud data you will start hearing the words like las uh, laz uh, e57 and uh, uh, whatnot pts ptx ascii and that's a set tip of the iceberg uh, fls then there's a lot of different formats and you want as a user if i'm the user i don't care what format it is i just want to get it in do something with it that's exactly the first step so importing scans is what the recap pro is first thing you open the recap pro this is the ui they slightly i would call it a little bit of modern compared to civil 3d or autocad and things like that but that's debatable some users like it some users not so much but idea here is all the projects you have is a uh, 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 kind of in the in the home page here and you basically create a new project. Uh, we call it a RCP, uh, re recap project basically. And by clicking the new project, you can add that information. And the cool part is this project can be in your shared folder, like your network folder or something, you can share it with others. Um, if, if you have a desktop character or something, you can even create it there. I'll, I'll, I'll go to that, go there a little later, but you can technically do that. But idea here is um, you can give the project name, and then it'll ask you, do you want to select the files to import? You click it and just add those files. That's it. Uh, most of the files we support, I honestly, in the last 10 years, I, it, I did not come across a single file format we do not support. If there's any, please let us know. We'll try to handle that. And when you're importing, there are several options. You can kind of prune it out and stuff. But one option I would strongly suggest is the coordinate systems because um, Many times the data you get may not have the coordinates to metadata embedded. It should. If it does, this will reflect. If not, I'll strongly encourage you to add that information so that any downstream usage um, um, you will have it. And it's not just adding. Sometimes you might get it in UTM, but you want that in a state plane, for example. So you can do the conversion here as well. I can give, let's say, I know I'm, I'm creating, I'm in this particular example, I might use the same coordinate system for current and target, but, uh, or where are we, UTM 15, I think we are in Texas. So UTM 15, let's say, for example, I want to get to Texas Central, I can create the current as a UTM, target as a state plane, and you press import. It not only embeds that, it not, not only projects into Texas state, and it also adds that information to your file, in this case, RCP or CS file. And when you take it anywhere, uh, in Autodesk or even outside Autodesk, that information comes with you so that you will not lose it. You know the units, you know the coordinate system, which is key in my opinion. And it has a lot of parallel processing and everything, which is all behind the screen. But uh, but after, depending upon your file size, after a few minutes, you will see those large files and you can visualize it, you can navigate, you can colorize by color and elevation and whatnot. There are different ways to do it. So that helps uh, Lot. That's a step number one. Step one is bringing the point cloud data uh, into Recap Pro. And by the way, if you guys have any questions, feel free to interrupt or we can have a Q&A later. I see Jason's hand is uh, raised. I think you raised it when I asked uh, um, how many users are using it. If not, yeah, just want to make sure. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the second step, step number two is publishing it. Since I'm talking about the ACC, uh, um, the cloud workflow, uh, in the past, people literally, RCS file, like I said, you can store it in the local, not the local, network folder, you share it with the others, but what are you going to do if uh, they are in a different location? Of course, they can VPN and access the network folder, it adds time, and or some people still do, and uh, sending hard drives to other places, wait for a few days to get it, all those things. So, having the publish to cloud make 
does not 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 only makes it easily accessible but also is easily accessible from anywhere I, there are a lot of times i actually give this actual live product demo with my recap pro on visualizing and feature extraction and things like that so so publishing is a key in that aspect and publishing is also very easy from recap pro especially with the desktop connector 16.4 16 plus basically it's very easy so here uh, i press the home button and there's a publish i click publish any changes you want to you can save the project so that when you publish you obviously publish the latest and greatest and if you already published you can update it or if you're going to create a new folder you can select new and this is where the cool part is uh, let me pause for one second i keep using the word desktop connector multiple times um, just to clarify that so desktop connector the equivalent i can tell you is something like an onedrive OneDrive sync on your machine. So desktop connector is kind of like a conduit from your desktop connects to ACC or BIM 360 in the cloud. It will look, all those files you're sharing on the cloud, it will show as a folder in your machine. So it looks as though you're working on the local file, but it's technically on the cloud, it syncs and whatnot. Like I said, it's equivalent is uh, uh, the OneDrive, I would say. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you guys used a desktop connector in the past, especially with the point cloud data or even other one, if you did not have a great experience, try the latest one, 16.x. I think 16.4 is the latest one. Phenomenal uh, performance improvement, especially for the point cloud data, but in general as well. So anytime I use the word desktop connector, that's what I'm referring to, just to be clear. And that's not default install from the Recap Pro or Civil 3D any product. You have to install it separately, but it's a free installation. You can get it from uh, manage.autodesktop.com, for example. All right, getting back to our business. So you can create a project name. Uh, you can also give the folder. This is where the, I don't want to make this as an ACC or a, a ACC's orders construction cloud or a BIM 360 demo but uh, you can actually create a project, you can actually share files, you can add your colleagues and stakeholders. So once you publish it, they will have a direct access automatically, things like that. Uh, I don't wanna call it sophisticated. Nowadays, every cloud sharing has those capability, but very easy for you to manage it. So here it gives you, um, being in a desktop connector, it gives you all those access. Now I can choose what I want to share, how I want to share, and I click publish. So this is where the 16.x does a great job. Uh, it uploads your data into the cloud, depending on your internet speed. Upload might take a few minutes to maybe 20, 30 minutes, depending on your size of the data as well. But you can see the progress in desktop connector, all those things. Once you do that, that's where the cool stuff starts. So now we are looking at the browser. I go to the exact same project and I will see the RCP file, the recap project. When you click it, you'll actually see the point cloud right off of the browser screen. And to do this, you don't have to have a product installed at all. Uh, imagine Jason or Adam um, published it and they're letting me know I can open my browser, like I said, in the Recap Pro or whatnot, and I can actually um, uh, I can actually visualize it just with a browser and I can see it anywhere, anytime, literally. And the performance is really good. I'll show you a little later. But having this publishing and sharing with the customers or with those stakeholders makes it much, much easier. So that's step number two. The, you already imported project, you click publish, give the project name or where you want to publish, it publishes the data in the cloud. So now the third step is the feature extraction. So now I published it. And uh, you can actually visualize, you can do model coordination, all those things. I will, I'll, I'll show that a little bit later. I just want to go with the theme of uh, step number one, two, three. And third step is the feature extraction part. So the way it works is, you, all, you know the deal, you already have the file here. We added this button called linear feature extraction on the bottom toolbar. By the way, the bottom toolbar does a lot of jobs, um, uh, uh, visualization, annotation, measurement, all those things. But today I'm going to focus on the feature extraction. So when I click the linear feature extraction, what and you can actually before you do that, I'm going to extract a curve or the paint stripe or whatever I want. I'm going to take the curve because that's a when anyone talk about civil infrastructure feature extraction, that's a break line comes to everyone's mind. So when I click that, it actually shows a cross section view on the screen. I can actually figure out which cross section I want to see, and I can pick the direction and all whatnot. 
it will tell you all those things it shows right in the browser screen you don't have to have a recap pro or any desktop product installed to do this job uh, and it actually comes with the four default vertices and that vertices you can edit it and this is a what i call is a technical term not technical term i call it as a template magic so it, you can create a template it happens to be a curb here it could be for a guardrail or the wall or anything you want i can set up exactly what template i want to extract and I can position those vertex. And when you go to edit more, I can add more vertex. I can add feature codes for each of those vertices. And I can even uh, delete if I don't any if I don't need any vertex or anything. So you can do all those things right off of the browser window, right in this thing without installing a product and without downloading a single point. Not a single point cloud data downloads. Everything streaming right now. So now here you can set it up. This is where I added the safe harbor one. So everything I showed you right now is in the product already. The, the new release that's coming up in a few weeks, it will have a template library. You can, you can create a template library, like a crown of the road, walls, or some user even do the pipes and all those things. Uh, you can set it up with a feature code. So your entire organization use the exact feature code and the library, so it's no, nothing get lost in the translation. And, and also the one that's coming up in a few weeks also has the point feature extraction. You can extract trees and other things like an asset as a part of this too. All right, coming back to this. Um, once you have the cross section, now I can go cross section by cross section and I, I can extract anything I want. And here I'm just still showing you the adding the vertex, removing the vertex, all those things. You have a complete control over it um, on this feature extraction part. Okay. I call it a feature kind of a setup part. Let me put it that way. And that's what I'm saying. We, we, you can actually make it automated with a template library that's coming up in a couple of weeks. But once you have that, uh, I just have a step three extended, I can go section by section or better yet, we had an automation capability. You click that, it actually goes every section for you, finds a best match with the point cloud data, with the template you pick, and it goes on and on. And if it hits somewhere like an autonomous car, it, it gives you back in the control. You can update the template or reset the template and it just goes. And that's a cool part here. So now I'm extracting the 3D polyline data and from the point cloud and uh, exactly what I want. I'm, I, am, I am the master of the accuracy. I can see exactly the cross section, how much accurate I want. And I don't have to download a single point cloud. The, this data could be a terabytes of data uh, which actually we did uh, last two weeks back we actually created a railroad extraction for i think up close to like 400 gig something like that like a large data and using that automatic uh, this automation extraction you can extract it so you don't point cloud data can be any any size but you don't have to download a single point do it off of the browser in any laptop or any machine and you can do it and what everything you extract is with your organization specifications. If not, you have complete control over it. I'm not trying to sell here um, the automation part. Automation helps you make, accelerate your extraction, but the way you can see the cross sections and you can actually do the manual way. I can actually do a control click on what I want. If you want to extract paint stripes, for example, we don't have the automation for paint stripes yet, but nothing is stopping you. I can actually create a template for three lane road or four lane road or something. I can use a top view. I can actually do a click and extract it right off of the browser. And there are customers who extracted building footprints, doors and windows and walls as a 3D poly lines and take it to Revit or other product convert. It, it's a 3D, right? I can convert it to a corresponding parametric model and do it much faster than downloading or getting the point cloud, opening it in the Revit and do it. There are customers who did um, uh, transmission tower extraction skeletons of the transmission tower just off of this. It's like a literally five minute or 10 minute job and I can take the 3D polylines. I can do uh, do whatever I want with it. I use the word uh, take 3D polyline. What do I mean by that? Exactly this. So anything you extract off of it, since the feature code, you can export that as a DXF or a land XML. We are working on a better way of data format and data transfer. The data import export is not the, the first choice or it's definitely not the last choice. Uh, we just want to keep that option. Sometimes the, this helps. If you want to take it to a different product, it actually helps. That's why we have it, uh, but we're definitely trying to make a better um, workflow on that. But 
but it, it works. So I, I can extract, anybody can extract, right? This is where one, um, it's funny, I was talking to one of the customer, he mentioned that now, first time in your, uh, in the point cloud feature extraction, or point cloud, uh, um, any asset extraction history, now I can truly democratize the extraction part. I can, like a step one and step two, if I follow, I publish it, I can ask anybody to extract it. They all put it, and it's a cloud collaboration, right? It's all in the cloud. So let's say all of us are in the, in the call today are going to extract, we open our browser, we extract it. Once I extract a feature and I save it, you will know, and on your side, it will refresh and you will see what I extracted. So we all can work together on a project, what are the size of the project is. And I now, and if let's say Adam is a project manager, he can he can democratize the whole thing. Many people can extract it. At the end result comes, a civil engineer can take the results, validate it, and use it in your design, which is now possible because I don't have to ship the data anywhere. So, and here is the where I'm showing in a civil 3D, those polylines come in with the feature codes and 3D polylines. So now I can create a surface or augment a surface or anything I want to do, uh, I can do. So this helps a lot on this overall workflow. So step number three, extracting those feature lines. And like I said, there are, this is why I put the safe harbor, there are a few weeks we're gonna release a new version where you can have a template matching, also the asset point extraction so you can literally get your whole thing done, uh, civil design with this workflow right off of the browser. So that's what um, in step one, two, three, you can actually extract the features, uh, use your point cloud to the fullest in your you know, civil design project. But this is just to, I just want to, I, I want to stick to one theme and want to make it, make a simple workflow so that you guys can easily try it on your side watching the video or, or uh, any help content. But this workflow has a lot of other applications. I know I talked a lot about the, uh, <clears throat> the cloud viewer, right? I talked about the size. Let me show you one more example. Um, now, right now you guys are pros and you know what I'm talking about. I opened RCP off of the browser. This one is a large data. You can actually clearly see it. It's a mountainous terrain. It's not high density. Uh, uh, you guys, you guys have seen this data before. Maybe it's a, each square mile will be like a 100 MB, 300 MB, 400 MB, depending upon the information content. But the cool part is now I'm navigating this right off of the browser and without downloading a single point. And I can measure it. I can annotate it. Those things will be saved with my project as well. And I can jump from one project to another. And best yet, in this case, you're storing everything in ACC. ACC takes care of your data storage. You're not even storing in your own, uh, hugging your, your server or something. And you can do all those things. This particular data is about 300 GB of data. Not, not that big, not that small, but not that big either. I have personally tested close to one terabyte of data. Like I mentioned, 424 miles, no, 424 kilometers of the railroad data from Europe is the largest I have tested close to one terabyte. It does a good job. And the model coordination, I keep um, saying, this is where you can bring in the mesh created from point cloud data and your civil 3D drawing and your Revit model can overlay right on top of each other. So what you see here is exactly what I'm saying. The color images, UH looking thing you see is actually a 3D mesh created from point cloud. Those multicolored lines you see are actually civil 3D alignments and corridors and everything. And there is actually a Revit model inside that building also. I, I didn't highlight it because this is civil based uh, um, presentation. But idea here is imagine your civil engineers um, have access to this either, not either actually, before starting the project or during the project or to the close of the project. At any point in time, they can actually check this and validate against the existing condition to make sure this is exactly what they want to do. And I'm not talking about just the volume comparison, height or a super elevation or things like that. Civil 3D does a fantastic job on that. We don't want to replicate it here. But sometimes the nuances come into picture. Is that uh, the road coming through, the parking spaces, or the uh, is there a, like a, when the water drains from a hydrology point of view, where is it going? Does it go into another building or something? I know those are things are covered in design, but having this in a visual impact in a 3D way to look at it, without downloading and importing and opening and another piece of software just open the browser for this project look at it i get my all the information right in a minute so that that ease of putting that information the fingertips of the civil engineers and architects is really what we are trying to get out of this and there are some, some enhancements we are planning on in this model coordination also 
but what you're seeing today uh, what you're seeing right now today you can actually try it exactly in the product today if you want to as well so this the visualization cloud visualization model coordination you if you're if you're an audience you're not a civil engineer you're not that much excited on the feature extraction which i'm hoping you would because that's the cool stuff even if you're not doing that this actually helps a lot also just purely leveraging your point cloud across your organization and stakeholders makes it much easier and it also does more i i, I kind of sidestepped on this whole thing on um, on the uh, recap pro preparation part that a lot can be done in recap pro now the the reason is i'm not trying to bring the focus back into the desktop product but when the large point cloud data comes in uh, i i don't want to come across and make it like a happy pass you know you do this you publish it you extract it you're good to go sometimes you need to remove some noises sometimes you might have multiple scans doesn't match exactly each other you want to hide one or remove one keep the accurate one or something things happen in the practical project right so that's why we added lots of capabilities uh, in the recap pro to prep in the beginning so your downstream usage can go through as much less hiccups or no hiccups as possible so this is one such example where we added an automatic point cloud classification i mean let's 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 imagine one quick scenario you are trying to do a you're trying to do a site design aspect and uh, uh, you somebody collected a drone and they gave you a latest data you bring in the data you want the surface to do some analysis your boss or your teammate are looking for some volume calculation of that and you're supposed to do it what are you going to do now you have the point cloud data in the traditional sense if you without any of this workflow i'm talking about you really have to find a way to bring that point cloud into your design product and hope that size is not too big and uh, conversion doesn't take too much time and you open it and then what i'm going to extract some lines and break lines and all those things so that i can start putting it together and uh, um, create a surface and then do a volume comparison and do it it all adds steps more so actually depending on the area you have, you have to draw more lines and so on and so forth now that imagine that scenario coming back to here same point cloud data you open it in uh, uh, in uh, Re recap pro and if you make any changes you can do it then we have automatic ground classification very simple option you can go detailed if you want to but very simple option you click and you start processing the software removes all the noises it keeps may any point cloud data and a drone or a mobile or a static or a what and now i just take that ground point civil 3d and create a surface do my volume literally it can be done in depending on the point size it can be done in a half an hour or in an hour or so and i don't have to most of them are automated tool right i create this i export it i take it and i create a surface that kind of a simplicity um, is what we are trying to make it more simple, obviously, but that kind of a ease of leveraging the point cloud data in your workflow is what we are uh, trying to um, get here. And this is one workflow. This is there in the product like the video showed from 23.1. Don't get uh, um, uh, 23.1 doesn't mean 2023. That's 23 released in 2022. That's how the Autodesk releases it. Uh, so it's been available for um, last one year. So. <clears throat> There are a lot of things um, um, can be done. So the next couple of slides I'm going to talk about is something that's going to come in next few weeks or so next release. Really. So I'll give you that information so that you understand that. Let me pause that for a second quickly. Um, okay. So I told you about the classification, right? I said automatic classification, and uh, you get the surface, you take it to your uh, civil 3D drawing, and you can do it. Again, one more thing, I, I just don't want to come across as a very everything rosy and I'm not sitting here and claiming the software does 100%. There could be some data sets, software could not classify all of them. There are some noises look like a ground, so we kept it. Uh, it, it actually happens a lot on the drone data. If you guys have messed with it, you will see. So there could be some cases where it didn't clean up fully. You want to, as a user, you need a control to do some cleanup or you want to make the data look more I don't want to say prettier more detailed so that you can leverage it somewhere downstream too so we are adding or we added manual classification segmentation tool right in recap pro where i can a lot of cable like for example it already has a ground i'm locking the ground right there i want those to be in vegetation 
I want power lines to be in power lines and street lights in street lights and cars in cars or remove the noises or lamppost or lamppost. So I can actually have a more detailed stuff um, in my data. And this is one example, right? In your cases, it could be different. Right? For a site, it could be different. You can define any classes you want. You can rename it, right? I'm doing right there. So you can add more detail to your product. And it doesn't take that much time, depending on the data set or the, what the list of items you want to do, uh, it does much faster. But the idea here is once you do it, it uh, it's available in your downstream and it's very easy to do. And the visualization stakeholder engagement is just a one application you can actually see, but there are a lot of practical uses. You can do it as asset collection. You know, there's a power line, I see it in point cloud data, it is missing in my civil 3D drawing or a manhole is missing in my civil 3D drawing, I need to know why. So without that, you won't even know that's supposed to be there. So that's the power of point cloud and that's the power of this tool. And, and this is my very favorite, one favorite example is one of the customer used this tool in our beta version. Uh, he collected a drone on the mornings and drone on the evening and he actually classified the cars on the road and he can actually count cars and he can come up with a traffic uh, around his neighborhood, around his campus and with a very simple capability literally automatic classification some of this uh, quick uh, polygon and tools and he can get it done in like an hour or two or so and great project he got it done in less than a day so things like that very helpful these tools come very handy in those cases so i'll show you one more tool before um, uh, before i let you guys go let me pause it for a second uh, again, I mentioned you can do the surface and you can take the surface into Civil 3D. Again, it sounds very nice, but actually to, when I sit and do it by myself, it's, it still can be way too many points, the surface. And that means too big, too many triangles in my drawing. That means it's a bigger surface and uh, not only the performance come into picture, but also it, things add up right on top of that. So we understand the pain point. So that's why we added this tool called intelligent decimation, where um, you can actually keep the key points that makes the surface without losing the accuracy of the surface uh, and remove the redundancy so you don't have to carry the things you don't have to carry, basically. It's a, your choice, obviously. And this video doesn't show you the complete UI components. Uh, we have a complete, you can control how much you want and everything, but the idea is very simple. With this uh, intelligent decimation tool, convert a point cloud something like this to something like this. What we have model key point. Uh, it looks like a very few points, right? I can switch off and switch on and see. It takes got a really, really small subset of point. But the beauty of that is when you create a surface off of it, the one on the left is the key point. One on the right is all the point cloud. The surface is exactly the same. This video doesn't do the justice. Uh, obviously, when you guys do, you can check with the volumetric and any comparison things to make it, but it does, it actually re represents the original surface almost exactly, but very, very few number of points. The, how much few, depending on your data density, depending on your project and everything. Uh, but in this particular case, the one you are seeing in the left is uh, I think 100 or 1 200 of the original point cloud data and yet maintain all the surface information for your um, um, design aspect. You can, you can actually see here some of the aspects, uh, the pit here and the the, the, the the crest going on here, all those things it actually maintained both on the left and the right. So that tool is also coming up in a few weeks. So I'm just trying to give you guys an, a, a bigger picture view of simple way of feature extraction and some prep work you can potentially do with very, again, with the minimum efforts so you can leverage your point cloud data um, to the fullest. And I'm just bringing this slide back again to show you that that's exactly what I promised in the beginning. You bring the data data into Recap Pro, you do the cleanup, and when the data comes in, one click, you can publish it. Now you can do a visualization, the model coordination, and the design extraction information. Now you can share it and take that into, in this particular example I showed today, uh, you can take it to Civil 3D and continue or complete your design. Uh, really, you can make the point cloud work for you uh, as simple as possible. So that's the main thing I wanted to cover today. Um, I, I think I might have talked really fast on what I should be, but uh, we can make a little bit of discussion. If you have any questions, 
anything you guys want to see again or something i went fast well courtney here has a question sure Ramesh, what if our company does not want to utilize the cloud yep so they don't want to do any processing or visualization in the cloud they only want their own data servers and systems to be able to see and use. Is there any of these workflows that will be inhibited by not using ACC or any other cloud services? Definitely. So the um, there are some first thing on the cloud part. If it is because of the security related stuff, there are a lot of uh, uh, FedRAMP and things like that happening on the AWS level for the cloud to give the, all the customers the confidence that you can actually use the cloud in a very secure fashion. You guys can check it out. But even without that, if there's a need, there are some tools actually already there. The only problem is the data management part you have to go through. Like for example, InfraWorks has uh, the cross-section based feature extraction, line extraction, point extraction. We even have some AI machine learning available there. Uh, you can actually leverage it. You can take it into Civil 3D. That workflow has been there for quite some time. Uh, we are also planning to add some capabilities in uh, in a Recap Pro or in Civil 3D potentially. But most of the customer request comes on the cloud-based stuff because that's the pain point when it comes to point cloud data the workflow i'm showing is the, the, the kind of gets more weightage right now but there are tools available in other software like infraworks to take care of that um oh you have another one because okay go ahead just one more i think i think <laughs> uh with the feature extraction um, does that become planometric data? So that's um, vector data or AEC objects? Say that again, one more time. When you do the feature extraction, does it automatically become a vector, a vector data or um, an AEC object if I assign it to be so? Yes, yes. So if, when you do the feature extraction, they are 3D polylines and points. And it's so it's a export as a land XML. So when you take it in there, I think it comes as a feature lines and a COBA points and civil 3D so you can continue your work. That's the way it works today. Great. Thank you. Um, so throw back to when you were talking about the coordinate system assignment, Todd had a question about um, a project that he had where he processed it and recap mm -hmm. the state plane but it created an UTM instead. Okay. So you assign the coordinate system as a UTM or? A... So he put it in the chat if you want to take a look at that. Oh, oh, oh wait, oh. Can you change the RCP file coordinate system and a model convert from UTM to a state plane feed? I process data and recap photo in state plane, but it created a UTM result. Absolutely, yes, yeah. So this one is the, uh, it's the existing RCP file. Oh, I need to check that. So you you can you can convert it. By the way, I think even you can convert it in the recap or not. I need to check. But when you bring it inside, it depends on what you want to do. If you bring it inside the Civil 3D or InfraWorks and you assign that's the input coordinate system, and your Civil 3D drawing or the InfraWorks model has the state plane feet, for example, it does the reprojection. It actually puts exactly where it should be. So that should happen. Um, if not, let me know, Todd. And then it looks like Christian asked, what's the largest effective area that you can cover in, uh, I guess, recap? Uh, which, what exactly are you asking, Christian? Like on the point cloud, the online viewer, how much large area to cover or, uh, or the recap pro? I guess, I guess for the, uh, for the recap pro. So let's say if I had like a 500 acre, you know, development project or whatnot. And I wanted to capture entirely everything because uh -huh. everything it would be actively being developed. Um, what's the largest that it could probably handle? If that, make, if, so, if that makes sense. I got it. I got you. So uh, it, it, the, most of the problem comes into the, the data size and your data IO aspect. The two largest things I have access this one is a mobile LIDAR data for the state of uh, the uh, city of Houston. So it was collected by, I don't know, like a sensor or something. I forgot exactly who collected the data, but it's a high resolution data for a whole of uh, Houston. Uh, I can open it and see it. And same thing with Singapore, city of Singapore, I can open and see it. 
uh, that actually the performance was pretty good uh, i can actually move around on things the other thing i tested was is close to a two terabyte data complete state of utah uh, highway it was also collected with a mobile lidar but not that high resolution it was a little bit lower uh, that took uh, that that took a performance toll i think it's probably because of the xy range for a statewide is big uh delta x and delta y and i think that was having some trouble and we we actually we are working on updating that part but in your case 500 acres of data um i know whether you're talking like in a static lidar or the airborne lidar or something but either way uh you should be able to handle it that's where i draw the limit from statewide i i was having some trouble but cities and multiple cities together i was able to do it very easily uh relatively easily okay uh, understood Thank you for that. Um, and and for example, if let's say if I was living in Colorado, and I was working on one of those mountains over there, um, you know, I know it's kind yeah. of rare rare occasions where you have to do something like that. Um, I guess would the point data, I guess, how would that work on a mountain perspective where you kind of have a lot of um, grade changes and everything's not just so measuring road density. Um. Which one you talk? How does it work in the sense visualization, or you're talking about the decimation part? I'd say for visualization. Visualization yeah. should work fine. Uh, I don't okay. see. I mean, because the you have all the points. So what intro? What the recap does? A good thing is it does a 3D tiling. It does all those level of details. It shows you the point cloud. But the point, whatever it is, it actually shows you there. So you should not have any trouble. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Absolutely. So, Ishka, I didn't understand the, the spaghetti contours. Oh, the one I showed you on the surface. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. It's funny, actually. It, it, it comes up every time. When I have a, a high-resolution point cloud data, you create the, the, the contour is a little bit squiggly, right? But people are used to, what's the right word there? Cartographic quality? Something like yeah. that? Cartographic yep. stuff, you know, I mean, you can do it like you can take the data and of course, you, know, you can sample it, you know, and stuff, but, you know, there's a place where the, let's say if you sample on a grid, you know, stuff, you know, there's a place where the sampling mm -hmm. gets you almost the same zigzag. So if I put, you know, anything that's, you know, less than maybe, a, you know, three by three foot, foot three by three foot, you know, uh, grid, yep. it, it's going to be like very zigzag and so on, but, you know, I can always have the options, you know, to take the data and push it to like FME. Yep. What the stuff, you know, I mean, I, I, at least at this year, I have the options for it, you know, but it's just like typically the end result is like, hey, we want, you know, spoof contours. It's like, what's this? Zigzags, you know, I, I mean, when it comes about labeling, it would be even hard to label the stuff, but it's all zigzags. So it's like, pff, yep, yep, yep. So, I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I told unless, you. Yeah, unless, unless there's a way, like, you know, maybe down the road, you know, for, you know, for all of this, you know, to, uh, to allow for, um, you know, like fills and, you know, the kind of stuff. Because you like you can do that on with like journey analysis uh, when you do journey analysis like you know typically do like on a big like big surface and you can run on that one when you do like big drainage areas you can run the fields and holes and stuff to fill the stuff the area because you know that you can like, remove most of those zigzags and stuff so yep yep but i, I, I agree with you i think that that that, that was my pet peeve also people collect this was like 20 years back or so uh, you can actually uh, the advertisement was like you can collect a high resolution millimeter centimeter level data Mm -hmm. then deliverable is a one meter grid i'm like you gotta be kidding me and, <laughs> and then it, and also it's a mostly it's not even a one meter grid people use then they actually extract the feature lines and connect towards it and that's how they create the surface so the this decimation part is kind of my um that, that's one thing i kind of i'm pushing it through see how the civil engineers will feel about it you can still have the brake lines all the feature extraction i'm talking about you can get the brake lines you can interpolate it nothing is technically stopping you on top of it, have this decimated points. It should show the surface better. Um, it may not show the cartographic quality because surface has perturbations. But at the same time, not too many points, too many triangles to give that much quickly. So something getting better. I'm sure the contour generation has a little bit of a smoothing algorithms and things like that. I'm hoping it will catch up soon. My next fallback plan is to create a um, like a 3D this is one thing i'm talking with the multiple dot's where instead of creating a contours to do stuff can we create a surface uh, like a 3d solids or something they can actually do design on top of it but that is uh, quite a few so a few years far from now 
is is Bertona reverse engineer like you know is the key point surface is the reverse engineer what the reverse engineer of the process of you know photogrammetry because typically on a photogrammetry when you collect the data you're gonna de you know make the density maps and we're gonna generate key points and then from the key points you can generate you know the not decimated you know the supplemented model yes so so it's like you know so it looks like you know this one it seems to be like a reverse of that stuff you know you start from like a big model and you generate you know the less you know points you know versus the other way you generate the key points but it's like every start very good at points then we'll be starting to supplement with more points so yep 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 and, but i don't want to lose the accuracy part of it like that area like yeah. christian's talking about i really want to keep the mountain relief and everything we don't want to lose that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no i know i know but yeah yeah it's a, it's a fan balance it's, a, it's always a fan balance exactly. and there are many many ways to stuff and especially as, as you mentioned like when we deal with big data sets is there any and is any of the plan to integrate with the S3 stuff? I know you guys you work, you know, work together with the S3 and parts and yeah. stuff, you know, the next, but you know, it's like hey, it's like I know the S3 they also sell their of course John to map, you know, you can convert photogrammetry, and then you know it, it's like hey, from here you can take it to the RGS online, publish it online and stuff. So is there any integration in the future to I, I yes, I, I mean, yes, I know you guys you might want, you know, because of the whole AEC stuff might want to publish to the AC, AC you know, cloud yeah. or ATC cloud, you know, but you know. Let's say, you know, for the GIS guys, you know, they don't want to go to ACC cloud, you know, I want to get the data, you know, you know, from a recap to via the pipeline to, you know, RGS online. Yep. It's like, can, I, can you split the stuff like, you know, where the data goes like, hey, it's like the same data at the beginning process and stuff. But at the end, you know, the, you know, the delivery or the publishing will be maybe for GIS guys on the RGS online. So, yep. yep. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that I, I gave this demo, uh, similar demo for a customer this week almost like three or four customers mentioned the exact same thing and if we can uh, you already know we have that connector for our chairs that connects from seven three yeah. different works so we can actually try to plug that in into this workflow so you can actually publish it uh, i think we should start considering that as a uh, potential uh, 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 publish aspect or export aspect as well yeah because i'm looking at the i mean it's like more dynamic connection and all that kind of stuff is now it's like an sd bay i mean it's, it's almost like we could go back to the silos you know i have my cat silo you have the gs silo you know it's like these guys you know i mean like as is like okay you want you go in the field you can plan you know your flight to if this product you know our you know john to map you can plan your stuff you know then you can collect the data you can process it in the cloud of our john to map in the yep. cloud then you're gonna publish it to the web you know now you know all this comes like, hey, you can do the same exact thing on our side. You can fly the stuff, begin to recap. We're going to give you a point cloud and put it to the ACC. I'm like, for us, it's like, you know, it's like what are you use with stuff, you know, especially since you guys work together with S3. I was yep. like, there should be like pathways of, you know, I mean, integration of like the software. It's like, it's not like, you know, it's like, hey, merging the software, it's integration of the data. So, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I can go one step further on that. I, one thing I was thinking is, when you're extracting, you don't have to extract from scratch every time. Maybe use the existing JS assets or something, help you extraction process. Maybe you can update asset management as a part of this so you can leverage what you have. So you don't have to boil the ocean every time. Because, yeah, I mean, you can say like extraction. I know you guys pushed on that one. It's good on that one. It depends on stuff. And, and of course, the SVD, we push on their stuff with the whole machine learning and, you know, all that kind of stuff. They will integrate and they can do automatic extraction of data. And I know that also Trimble that comes with their own stuff, of, you know, from behind. And uh, it's like, yeah, it's, it's lots of stuff, you know, that, you know, can be implemented more or less. As always, you know, like when it's like, I'm not, to, let's say, use one platform for all the fingers, like, you know, use the platform for the step that you does the best thing at it, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why like when it comes up, like, you know, recap, yeah, it's, it does a pretty good job, you know, but for me, it's like on my side, it's like, you know, when it comes up, like the, you know, process the data from, you know, let's say photogrammetry, you know, it's like, hey, I'm a bent league on that side, you know, at this moment, you know, I'm using the context capture. I mean, yep. it does the stuff, you know, but at the end it's like, you know, of course, you know, it's pretty much, you know, at the end of the, the you know, where you're designing the data, it's in, you know, Autodesk. So you have to get some stuff that's suitable to Autodesk, you know, product, you know. Yep. So, yeah. So, to, what is, yeah. so to piggyback on that, we talked about taking it from recap, decimating it, putting, putting it into civil 3D, and Civil 3D traditionally, at least for me, does not handle big services or big data very well. And that's where like my question is, like back to Christians, like I got 500 acres of heavy development and lots of features. And I want to, let's say, integrate that back up to AGOL through my portal, you know, and my art connector. But getting it from that one recap 
and getting it all the way to that final step of AGOL is is been like that that seems to be a challenge, right? To get it to work well in civil 3D. What's the steps um in let's say improving that or do you have more information on that, Ramesh? Sure. So you're you're asking the in, uh, instead of it's civil 3d is having a large area instead of that you want to do an agol or after civil 3d you want to publish it to agol um it's just that gis uh integration yep. so whether or not that's through the connector through portal or whether or not that's you know some type of uh Got it. Let's go all the way back to map export you know <laughs> It just seems like Civil 3D is having a hard time handling big surfaces, big data. Got it. And you just mentioned that Recap is handling them pretty seamlessly for city-sized worth of data. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I put a city-sized worth of data into Civil 3D, um, good luck. Gotcha. Yeah. So the, the this decimation and feature extraction should definitely help. I think the latest Civil 3D does a, a better job than the older versions obviously but even if you go if you talk about big data as a two meaning higher resolution data or higher area data yeah so if a higher area data you may have a little bit trouble depending on the number of size so answering your question on the publishing to it that is part of the maybe you can have a separate session on the gis connector piece uh, so we are planning working on publishing the surface also we can already do the feature lines and everything publishing surface as a tin surface or a raster surface or something to go into AGOL or the portal so you can actually access it on the S3 cloud as well. Or, there, are, there are some discussions going on on that. Yeah. Or maybe on that side is like, you know, since we know that, you know, S3 does pretty good on the LOD, you know, for data. I mean, it's like, you know, based on what, what I want and, you know, what I need to do with this stuff, you're going to give me like, you know, high resolution or low resolution of the same data set in at the root, you know, at the root. That's how it does with rasters, you know, it gives like, you know, at, if I look at one mile away, it gives me like a lower quality and I still stop, you know, if I get close, it gives you stuff. So maybe we can do the same stuff with the data. Let's say we publish to ACC. If you look at the whole city of, let's say Austin, you're gonna get, you know, like, you know, maybe a lower quality and stuff, you know, cause you, need, you don't need one foot contours. You're gonna need maybe five or 10 foot contours. But as you come closer to your project, you know, you should supplement it to give you a different layer of the surface. It's like, hey, you know, like a dynamic surface, dynamic LOD surface, so. Yep, I, I, think that, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I, that, that, that's kind of what uh, um, Civil 3D is also planning to do. I think they have some of the foundations already there, so you should see some improvements. But I agree with you. I think that we should have a versatile software. The use case keep different. The civil engineers can use Civil 3D, but then the GIS, you need the data to do other things also. Now no. the world, world, and, world. and I said the same stuff, you know, because typically for us, you know, we are localized when we design the project. On a project, you know, I need one foot count, which is not a stuff, you know, but then, you know, it's like, you know, our project requirements for the, you know, like for the, the what's called, for the, Permitting is like, you know, hey, you have to develop a drainage area map. You know, I don't want to go to S3 to do my drainage area map. So if I have the whole data, it's like, you know, hey, for the drainage area map, you know, I need the same data. I don't want to create a new surface. Yep. I want the same surface, you know, but they're going to be in a different, pretty much the different layers of the surface, you know, but you have the same exact surface from zero to 100%. But, you know, for 20, 20 scale sheets, you're going to show up at one foot contours. For 100, 100 scale sheets, you're going to show up in five foot contours. You know, the data is the same at the source. It's not like different ones. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. LOD. LOD, yep. <laughs> well, I guess with that, we've come to the top of the hour of our recording. That was a great presentation, Ramesh. Um, really appreciate you coming out and talking to us and showing us all that information. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, guys. Um, we look forward to having you come back and talk to us about more stuff in the future, too, if you're up for it. Yeah, I think we, we should have one more on the S3 stuff, actually. There's a lot of cool stuff happening. We should have to schedule that uh, in a few months. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Courtney will definitely love that. Courtney. Yes, I think a lot of us will. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And if you have any questions even later, please feel to uh, email me or contact me later. We can always have a chat. Yep. Okay. Thank Thanks you. Thank you, Ramesh.